Okay, so welcome back to Student Day Tutorials. We're here at the MATLAB Bayesian Dojo, and we were just learning about Markov chains using our Bayesian Ninja. And he was uh, basically introduced to the Frequentesian Ninjas, and now he has to train to battle them. And so part of that is learning how the uh, how they fight, learning the different fighting styles, and then how those fighting styles, given those transition probabilities, how they turn out, how they basically fight overall, what is the how should it be blocking in general, given these what the likelihood of being different states is, and then how to battle the master Bayesian ninja who tries to set up this combo and he tries to intercept them. And so here's a MATLAB implementation, and I added a couple extra things, including the eigenvalue decomposition. Uh, eigenvector decomposition of a regular ergodic um, Markov uh, system and then also a couple of regular non-regular examples because I feel like I wasn't completely clear in my discussion of it. So let's go ahead and look at that. So what I do is I here's the re example of a non-regular uh, but ergodic Markov chain, right? And so what it means is that every state can, can get to every other state but that um, you have a zero at all times in all iterations, at least one zero. And here's an example. So what you do is you first we set up our uh, matrices. This is our uh, state transition matrices. Okay. Um, and so this is uh, again column A, column B, column A, column B, current, uh, future. And so uh, that's basically how you set it up. You draw your matrices. And what I've did here is created this iterative system just so we can see how the system works over time and include some extra code that allows us to visualize the states. Um, but this is pretty much all that you need. This right here is where i is the iteration. p raised to the power of i will give you the values you need. That's it. It's that simple. So let's go ahead and look at this one and see how it evolves over time. Okay, so I made a nice little kind of interface thing for us. So this is state A, this is state B, and notice these values are 1 and 1, and these are 0 and 0. And this is going to be showing in discrete time steps the evolution of the transition probabilities for each of these four elements. So let's take a look at what they are. One time step, two. And notice this, that they're going back and forth. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And if we look at our matrices, it's swapping back and forth, back and forth. It'll always do that. This will always oscillate in terms of transition probabilities, and so you'll always have zeros and ones in every single state transition matrices. Even though, you know, you, here, for example, we can get to both of them. There's no problem getting back and forth between them. But at any one point, there are certain ways in which it still cannot move. And so this is not considered a regular matrices, and we see the transition probabilities oscillating over the course of these iterations. Okay. So. That's just for view. So now let's look at one that has zero elements in the initial transition matrices, but not always, so thus it's still regular. So here's our example matrices. Um, there are some numbers in every one except for this one that has a zero. So you might then think, okay, well, this isn't regular. But remember, to be regular, all it needs is one iteration to have a, um, a non zero, a full matrices that has non zeros. So let's go ahead and look at see how this one evolves. Okay, so here's our initial values. So this is the value for looping within itself. Here's for crossing, here's for crossing, here's looping within itself, and this one is zero. And so if we look at the evolution over time, first we get this asymptotic kind of performance. Notice that this is non-zero now, and bam, we've already hit asymptote by, I say like, you know, 12 or 11, it's still a little bit of fluctuation. But around step 11 or 12, or definitely at 30, We've asymptoted, and this is basically what our final matrices will look like. And again, notice how now that the row vectors are all the same. These are the same. Okay, cool. Now, let's go on into our training. So training level one, learning to read your opponent. Um, you guys could read this little thing. But basically, he's fighting against the Frequentesian Ninja Clan, right? And so he needs to learn how to fight against the Foot Soldier. So we're going to look at the basic elements of the Foot Soldier. Now remember in the last video I said that the foot soldier has three states, three moves. It could punch, which is going to be red. It can kick, which is yellow. And it could do a flying falcon punch, which is in blue. Um, that's an old video game. You Google that one. Um, but basically it's a very strong, awesome punch, right? And it'll win the game for you. Anyways, so basically what the master ninja is going to do is he's going to tell you, well, there are several different fighting styles and they're described by their transition probabilities. Your job is to see how those 
transition probabilities evolve over time. So you get an idea of over time, over a number of iterations, if you're fighting that ninja for a month, for weeks, you've iterate over and over again, what kind of moves do you expect to see on average from that individual so you know how to prepare your blocking tendencies and your blocking skills towards like punching, kicking, or, or like parrying a falcon punch? So uh, I described them in this. I guess I was going a little old school in my mind. So this would be the E-Honda style. If you guys ever play Street Fighter 2, he likes to do that punch. And this is what the I basically define each of the transition probabilities. Here's a Chun-Li style where she likes to kick. And then here's the Captain Falcon style, which is obvious. He likes to do the Falcon punch. And then just for fun, I added the Master Frequentation Ninja, where he's equally skilled at everything. And so we can see how those probabilities evolve. So let's draw this one out. Let's do the E-Honda one first. Okay, so this is Punch. This is Kick. This is um, a Falcon Punch, right? And we're going to see the plot just like we saw before. Now, notice that he's got a very high likelihood of staying at punching if he's in the punching state and a low likelihood to move out of this state. And then these other ones have pretty much even just probabilities of going between states. So what might you think happened? You might think that given that once you're here, you're going to try to stay here, this is kind of an absorbing state. In general, that if he's here, he's going to stay here. And if he's somewhere else, he'll move evenly and eventually go here. So there's going to be a lot of waiting here. But let's see if, if that actually pans out as we think it does. They move, they evolve, and then, so this is nice seeing the evolution of the, the values. And then the asymptote, and let's just take that out to like say 30 or something. Okay, and these are our, if we look at our matrices, see the row matrices are all identical. And it basically is what we thought, that you know, independent of how you start, you're very likely to stay in the punching state. There's a 78% chance that you'll be getting punched by this E Honda style foot soldier. Okay, um, let's look at the next one. Let's look at the Chung Lee style. So Chung Lee style again, it's the same thing kind of, but likes to kick, right? And let's look at that. We get these evolution. They're changing. They're changing. They're changing, and. I guess let's just wait to 30 again. Notice that these things asymptote pretty rapidly, right? And that kind of makes sense when you're kind of approximating an average and things aren't changing very much. Again, these are, these are stationary. We're using the same transition probability every time. We're not introducing a new one. So this is kind of what we might call a stationary model, where we have that initial transition probability and that's multiplied through. And so it doesn't change after our each iteration. You know, it's always p to the n, not p to the n and then p prime to or p like you know, or Z to the to the M, you're not changing the overall rules, so it's a stationary system. And here we could see that in now at this context that the kick is much more likely, this Chung Lee style, it's seventy nine percent. And notice again it becomes independent of the initial state. No matter how they started the fight, this is on average what you expect to see to happen. Now let's look at the Captain Falcon. We'll go through that kind of quickly. Oops. And the evolution of those. And so this is plotting each of those transition probabilities. And there we go. This is around, again, now we see the biasing towards the Falcon Punch. And then let's just look at the very last one, the Master Ninja. Master Ninja. And so how do you think this one's going to play out? Just like that. With all things being equal, they never change, right? Because we're already in that row vector to start off with. They're all 3, 3, 3, 3. And so the Master Ninja is always unpredictable. And anything he does, he could do something different later. And it'll never change. And so he's very dangerous in that context. OK, so that, that's that. Um, now I just want to show you level training level two. So this is where we're having the ninja, and if he gets hit by a combo, a sequence, because I wanted to kind of show there's a little bit of a memory in this system. You could build that into it, despite the fact that it's memoryless. That you could kind of see that if he gets to the falcon punch, he had to have gone through the kicking and the punching. And so we kind of get an idea of like, well, what is the likelihood of that happening, given some different strength of the ninja to to. Uh, intersect or break the combo or parry or whatever. So here our intersecting move will be B. 
So the larger B is, the greater the probability of the Bayesian ninja can interrupt it. And so you could change that value and see what, it, what happens. So let's keep it at 0.2, so it's low. It's hard for him to, to parry that. Here's our model. I put zeros by the states that are not uh, being drawn. There are zeros right now. And let's look at the evolution of the system. So there's lots of input outputs, lots of things going on here. But we're still going to asymptote. Here we go. Here we go. It took a little, no, not that long. It's just a little faster, faster code to run. All right, more things to calculate. All right, and we're slightly asymptotic at this point. And so we can see that the probability of ending up, say, the probability of ending up in this falcon punch uh, status is 0.14. Uh, so there's like a 14% chance of getting falcon punched out. So let's change this value now. Let's make it 0.7. And let's evolve it. Let's see where it goes. They're going to reach. They're reaching asymptotic performance. And there we go. So there's a point oh there's a two percent chance or three percent chance of getting uh Falcon punched out. So see, the better he is at blocking, the less likely he gets Falcon punched out. So in the other one, when he couldn't really block very well, you thought it might have been higher, but it was only 17% chance of getting Falcon punched out. And here we uh, see that you know if he just if he gets a lot better, we could reduce it quite a bit. All right. So this MATLAB. Oh, let me show you this one last thing. So I talked to you about the end of the tutorial video on how to do the eigenvalue math. Uh, basically, like what we're doing is we're iterating. You know, we're just raising to the power, right? And that can be computationally heavy and stuff. And so an alternative way to do it is to do this eigenvalue decomposition. And remember, I told you that what's going on is that in this asymptotic performance, that is, as n goes to infinity, the, um, the, the, the asymptotic row vector, w, becomes basically is equivalent to the left eigenvector with the eigenvalue of 1. So we'll do an eigenvalue decomposition. So let's say, what is uh, i in this case? Let's say i, is, let's put i equals 100. And let's see what it is. So we have our matrices. Let's just, let's just restart this. Let's just create a matrices up here. We'll just use the e Honda one. No, I'm sorry, we'll use the big one. We'll use the, uh, the training level 2 one. Okay, so there's our matrices. There's our starting matrices. And if we take p and raise it to the 1,000, for example, this is what our matrices looks like. These are the outputs. Okay, so now let's do the de the eigen decomposition. We do our eigenvalue calculation. We get our vectors and our values. So we got our vectors up here. We got our values down here. We want the one that has a one closest to one. Now this looks like one, but a lot of times it's slightly off. So first thing, let's just take that diagonal of it. So now we have our eigenvalues. And they're not exactly one, even though it looks like it. Sometimes it's a little bit off. So you just do this little trick of basically subtracting off and taking the absolute value and find the one closest to the value of interest. In this case, it'll be n. And we get the column of that. And what is that minimum value? And then we go, and what column is that? It's going to be column 1. And of course, that makes sense because our values number 1 is this one right here. And then we take that vector. And this would be our eigenvector. Now, that's our eigenvector, but we have to normalize it because that's that's not uh, summing up to 1, right? So we hit this normalize that, and look at that. We get this back. And that is exactly what we saw in our row vector right here. I'll copy that. Well, you can, yeah. See? And so this is another method for getting out that asymptotic value of, a, of your system. Okay? Um, if you have any questions or comments, please add them to the uh, uh, comment line or visit the website to see some more comment and you could uh, add any interest you want and I'll get emails about that. Okay, great. Thanks.